Hi everyone and welcome to my new video. It's time to set up my bullet journal for May and I really like how the setup turned out so I can't wait to share it with you. I feel like a bit of a broken record for saying this but I again <laughs> struggled to come up with this theme and that's why this video is coming later than usual as well. Because I really enjoyed drawing ducks last month, I wanted to do some kind of animal theme for May as well, and I decided to draw capybaras as they have been all over my For You page on TikTok. <laughs> I've never seen them in real life as we don't have capybaras here in Finland, and if I didn't use TikTok I probably still wouldn't know that these cute animals exist. <laughs> Anyway, I know many of you enjoyed seeing the sketching process in my last video and I would have wanted to include that in this video as well, but because I'm making this setup really late, I had to skip it this time to save some time. I can probably make a YouTube short on how I sketch them later if you are interested, so maybe leave a pen emoji in the comments if you would like to see that. I went for this more loose and sketchy line art, so I would achieve this more kind of hairy look for this capybara. One thing I struggled with was the face of the capybara, because it can easily start to look like a bear or something if you draw it wrong. I think they have a really unique head shape, which looks a bit like a square, and the distance between the nose and mouth is quite long. Capybaras are actually the biggest rodents on earth and they look a bit like gigantic guinea pigs, <laughs> um, which kind of makes sense because they are closely related to guinea pigs, which I didn't know but I just googled it. <laughs> From what I read they mainly live in South America and are strong swimmers like beavers for example. Besides this capybara, I also wanted to draw some flowers on this cover page to give it more of a spring touch. I don't know what these flowers are because I just made them up and I think I maybe should have added a bit of line shading in them so they would have had more dimension. I tried to make the flowers look organic by drawing the petals very loosely with some wavy lines and I also added some leaves to fill up the empty spaces around the flowers. After the line art was done, I erased all the pencil marks so they wouldn't peek through the colors and for coloring I decided to use colored pencils once again because they just look a little bit better in this kind of illustration in my opinion as markers would have looked a lot more streaky. I decided to go for more of a smooth finish instead of drawing the individual hairs for the fur because that would have taken too much time and when I tried that in one of my sketches it ended up looking a bit too busy. First I tried to color the whole capybara with an even layer of light brown and then I went over some areas with more pressure to add shadows. Coloring with colored pencils obviously takes a bit more time compared to markers, but I love using them because it's easier to control how dark the colors end up looking and I also like that I can erase them if I end up making a mistake, which luckily didn't happen this time. Capybaras usually have a bit darker nose and mouth area along with little feet and ears, so I left those areas empty and went over them with a darker brown that was slightly more cool toned. I started off with a really light pressure with the face and darkened up some areas, but for the ears and feet I used more pressure because they are darker compared to the face. Now looking back I probably could have added line shading in some parts of the capybara as well, but I was scared of reading it, <laughs> so I decided not to do that. I think it ended up looking cute still and maybe I will try the line shading later if I end up drawing this again. Anyway, I think it's really important to work with light layers and build up the color slowly when coloring with colored pencils, because if you color the first layer with a lot of pressure, it's very difficult to add color on top of that. That's why you see me darkening up some areas many times, and I used a bit darker 
light brown for the lower parts of the capybara's body, for example. I also ended up targeting the dark brown area small, but cut that part out of the video because it would have been really long otherwise. For the flowers, I decided to go for a color which I don't usually use, but I think brown and blue go really well together, so that's why I decided to use blue this time. I mean, I could have also used pink or light gray, but I feel like that would have been a bit boring, and lately I just have been needing a bit more colors in my life. I think I'm going through a bit of a change in my art style, and that's also why I've been struggling creatively a bit. Speaking about that, I almost decided not to post a plan with me video this month, because I just have been feeling quite burned out creatively, and had zero theme ideas or inspiration. I often struggle with creating my themes, and want to be honest about that because I think a lot of us go through that. Making art isn't always easy, and coming up with new ideas every month is definitely challenging. I also feel some pressure sometimes because I create art online and of course do care what others think and what the social media algorithms think. <laughs> it can be very difficult to find the balance between doing art for yourself and doing art for others if that makes sense. Anyway, I really appreciate you always being so kind and supportive towards my art and for watching these videos. I know the pressure isn't coming from you as it's created in my own head and I guess it's part of being an artist as well. Now back to my cover page. I colored the leaves with the same light green color that I used in April as well. And I think this is the perfect green shade as it's very summery and perfect for springtime as well. I again used a very light hand and added darker line in the middle of the leaves for more dimension. For the finishing touches I decided to add a bit of a light grey grid on the background and I don't know where I got this idea but I really love how it turned out. I think it just filled up the empty spaces nicely without taking too much attention away from the illustration. Overall, I really like how this cover page turned out and I'm glad I decided to try out something a little bit different with the colors and just have fun with drawing goofy capybaras for this theme. On the page on the left I decided to try out something a little bit different that I've never done before and I again have no idea where I got this idea. <laughs> anyway, I made a little pocket from this craft paper by folding the sides and the bottom part of the paper and I also cut out the overlapping corners so this pocket wouldn't make my journal too chunky. I attached this to my journal with some glue tape and I added that on the folded areas and then I decorated the pocket with some printed book page just because I felt like it would look a little bit too dark otherwise and take too much attention away from the cover page. Basically the idea of this pocket is that I will add some positive affirmations in there so I can read them whenever I feel down or have some negative thoughts like self-doubt or things like that. I actually didn't know this before making this but May is mental health month so I guess this goes really well with that as well. Positive affirmations and quotes can definitely feel a bit cheesy but sometimes you still need to hear them and I guess the cheesiness comes from the fact that they are relatable and people tend to use these kinds of quotes more often because of that. I ended up making four paper strips with positive affirmations and you can pause the video if you want to see them a bit better. I will probably add more of these in here later, but I didn't have the time <laughs> to search any more good quotes when I was filming. I think this idea turned out really cute and I'm excited to see if this will help to cheer me up and keep a bit more positive mindset. Anyway, I decided to add this printed book page on the edges of my cover page later after I had finished the rest of the spreads because I felt like it still looked a bit empty, especially with that pocket on the left side. 
I think this tight the two pages nicely together and I also really like how the book page looks with the colors that I used. I also added this gold frame around the cover page just to give it a little bit more structure and shine. Oh and then I also added a bit more shadows in the capybara because I felt like it needed a bit more dimension. Now let's move on to my monthly spread. As always I decided to do a one page calendar but I changed things up a little bit which you will see later. I used a Tom Bodwell brush pen in the shade 992 for this just because it's a little bit more cool toned and I think it goes better with the blue tones. I actually should buy new Tom Bodwell brush pens because some of my favorite colors like the 942 are almost used up. I'm going to be traveling to Berlin in June, so I will probably buy new ones from there. If you have any favorite Tombow shades, definitely let me know in the comments so I can check them out. I think I want to get a couple more brighter shades as well. I kept this calendar page really simple and did just this basic calendar layout with 3x4 boxes. And on the bottom of the spread I drew this blue flower which again I have no idea what it is <laughs> as I just came up with it. The fun thing about flowers is that they are really easy to draw even without looking a reference because you can just vary how many petals you include and change the shape of the leaves. I drew these ones back in 2022 in my March bullet journal setup but used different colors for them back then so they looked a little bit more like daisies I guess. For this flower I added a tiny bit of line shading with my Thinness 003 Pigma Micron and I really like how it ended up looking. By the way I have listed all the supplies I used in the description box as always so go check that out if you are interested and let me know in the comments if I forgot to add anything in there. <laughs> I'm kind of surprised how much I ended up liking these blue flowers. I guess change is good sometimes and using different colors definitely make this theme feel a bit different compared to my previous ones. This setup took about 4 hours for me to make which was a bit longer than usual especially because I didn't end up making any weekly spreads this time. I didn't use my bullet journal as much in April as I usually do and instead was just mainly using it for tracking habits. So I decided to keep my setup a bit more minimal for May because of that. For example, I didn't make a weekly planning section like I usually do and the reason why I didn't add that is that I'm going to take May a bit slower and easier. I haven't been in the best health space recently and I want to focus more on my health so I will probably take a social media break in May just to reflect a little bit and focus on other things. I started going to the gym again after not exercising in about 3 years <laughs> and it's been really fun so that's going to be one of the things I want to keep up doing in May. It's really hard to start moving your body regularly after a long break and the main reason why I have been able to make it a habit again is that I go to the gym with my mom. <laughs> it's much more fun when you have a training buddy and don't have to go there alone. Anyway, enough about that. On the right side I made my habit tracker as you can see and it's really simple with some mini calendar grids. I'm not going to write out the habits in this video because I'm not completely sure yet what I want to track, but I will probably track my usual habits like vitamins and making my bed in the morning and maybe I will add some new ones too if I feel like it. I'm really surprised and proud that I did really well with my habits in April, so I'm hoping to continue that next month as well. After my calendar grids were ready, I felt like the composition of the spread was a little bit off because the calendar page had too much empty space on the top and the happy tracker page had a little bit more space on the right side. 
So I decided to add this printed book fades on the top left corner and also some fitting newspaper washi tape from the washi tape shop on the both sides. By the way, I have an affiliate code for the washi tape shop and you can find it in the description box if interested. I get a small commission from the friend if you use it and you will get a 10% discount. So it's a win-win for both of us and helps to support my channel as well. So thank you so much if you use it and it's also totally okay if you don't. I already appreciate you so much for watching my videos, so thank you for that as well. Anyway, for the finishing touches I added these small flower stickers which are from Oak Morning Glass Etsy shop and I bought this myself. They have really cute stickers and I love their style, so definitely check out their Etsy shop and I will also leave a link to that in the description box. On the next spread I decided to make a one line a day page after not using it in a couple of months. I figured that if I don't end up using weekly spreads in May, this might be a fun way to reflect what happened during the day and also what made me happy. I decided not to include a mood tracker in this setup, just because I didn't really use it in April, and I think this one line a day page is also a great way to reflect my moods if I feel like it. On the right side I made a super simple spread where I will write my monthly favorites, and these can be songs, TV shows, movies or favorite moments for example. I usually have only added a small section of my monthly favorites in my monthly review spreads, but since I want to focus more on the good things in May, I wanted to have a little bit more writing space. In the bottom right corner I drew these two capybaras, which ended up looking so cute that I just wanted to pet them. I used reference photos for all my capybara drawings by the way, because I definitely can draw them from my memory. I'm kind of sad that I didn't end up drawing more of them, but if I end up making a weekly spread or two, I might draw more of them. I already have a one theme idea in mind for June, which I'm very happy about, because coming up with it won't hopefully be such a struggle. <laughs> Anyway, I'm excited to see how this setup will end up working for me and if I end up missing some things like my mood tracker or weekly planning section. I think it's really important to notice what's working for you and not to create spreads just because you feel like you have to. I mean, there's nothing wrong creating a pretty spread and not using it because that happens all the time. But if you keep repeating those spreads just because you feel like other people are making them and you have to as well, even though they might not work for you, it can start to feel a bit pointless, I guess. For me, the enjoyment of using my bullet channel comes when my spreads are easy to use and work well for me, so that's also why I decided to change things up a little bit this month. I would love to hear what are your favorite spreads to use in your bullet journal, so definitely let me know. It's always interesting to hear how many different ways there are to bullet journal and also see how differently it can be done. Also seeing how much your own style of journaling can change over time is really fun. <laughs> I was first thinking of doing just a scrapbooking theme this month because I've never done that and it might have taken a little bit of the pressure off, but I'm really glad I decided to draw instead because I really love how this theme turned out and looking at it makes me really happy. Like how can you not feel happy when you look at these little guys? <laughs> I'm so excited that spring is finally here and I can't wait for summer to come. I saw flowers on my walk the other day and totally didn't expect to see them because we still have a little bit of snow. Later on that walk I almost stepped on a butterfly because I didn't see it at first and I was really surprised on seeing that as well. Seeing these kinds of little signs of spring and summer is so refreshing after such a long winter. 
The best thing about spring is the amount of daylight and it's crazy how much that can affect your mood and energy levels. Summer has always been my favorite season, like it probably is for most Finns. Um, yeah, winter is nice too, but it just lasts a really long time. <laughs> Anyway, enough about that, I added the same kind of grey grid on the background, because I really liked how that looked. I think I actually like this illustration more than my cover page, because these copybaras are a bit more expressive, especially the one on the left. For the finishing touches, I added the same old book page, because I felt like the spread would have been a bit too simple otherwise, and I also like the look of the printed book page. I also got this idea to add a golden frame all around the spread, and I think I've seen Tina's diary to do this in one of her videos, so I got the idea from her. This was such a simple way to make the spread a bit more decorative and put together, and I really like how it turned out. Finally, I added some flower stickers in the corners, and then we are done. Now it's time for the final flip through. I would love to hear what you think of this theme, so definitely let me know in the comments. I really enjoyed making this one and I can't wait to start using these spreads. Make sure to leave a like and a brown heart emoji in the comments if you enjoyed this video and I hope to see you in my next one. Thank you so much for watching and bye bye! Capybara, 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 capybara.